This is a short video to assist you as you collect your dried urine samples for hormone analysis through Precision Analytical. The test kit that you should have received from your healthcare provider should include five of the urine collection devices which are in individual Ziploc bags with a label sticker for each one. There should be a requisition form which needs to be completed entirely. Uh, there should be instructions for the test and there should be a return envelope. Additionally for some kits there may be an additional uh, small card that needs filled out potentially with payment information on that uh, so please fill out all that information and we do need all of the information requested. Uh, a lot of times the interpretation of the results is dependent on uh, many of the questions that are asked so please do complete those entirely before you send that back in and that includes the label for each of the samples. So for each of the samples there's going to be a sticker label uh, and those labels will have your last name, first initial, and then the time of collection and whether that's AM or PM and then which of the four samples you might be collecting. So those are going to go on the urine collection devices after the sample is collected. So each of these devices uh, has a handle on the top part of it and you want to keep your hands as much as you can off of the bottom part which is filter paper and that's where the urine's applied so this is really simple you either urinate directly on the lower portion and saturate it or you can urinate into a clean plastic or paper cup and just dip the urine collection device until the paper is saturated so following each collection uh, it's probably a good idea to put your name and on the sticker and the the time before you collect um, but that sticker then will go right on the handle and then you can just uh, adhere it to either a towel rack as in this case or a counter edge on the bathroom somewhere where it's out of the way but where it can hang freely uh, and it can dry and so those need to dry overnight approximately uh, 24 hours and then afterwards you can just peel them off and then you'll want to take this part of the handle that was uh, stuck to uh, wherever it was hanging and then just fold that over and put it on the handle and be sure to not touch the filter paper with either the sticker or your hands uh, while you're doing that. So when they're finished then you can see that each one of these is in its own little baggie so you're going to put them back in there once they're completely dried and there's your sticker label that's folded over the handle and you can see the urine's been applied to the bottom part of that which is now dry and that can be sent back to the laboratory for analysis. So when are these urine samples collected? The timing of the samples uh, is very intentional uh, because some of the hormones that we're measuring are moving or changing throughout the day and we want to capture those at specific times. So the four times are dinner time around 5 p.m., right at bedtime, and then first thing in the morning when you wake up, and then two hours after waking. So starting with the dinner time sample, uh, so this is intended, uh, you know, after work, dinner time, right around there, 5 p.m., um, that's approximate. Well, we want to keep, you know, about as close as, uh, to that as we can, uh, but it doesn't need to be, you know, absolutely exact. Um, on the day of testing, you really want to keep your fluid volumes uh, very moderate. You don't want to be hydrating yourself when you're taking this test, and especially after lunch, uh, when you're about to collect your dinner time sample, you want to stay entirely away from caffeine. Uh, and it's a good good idea to stay away from caffeine all day if you can, but but especially after uh, the the lunch time. And then you want to keep, again, your fluid volumes pretty moderate. Uh, definitely don't be hydrating. And then what you're going to want to do is empty your bladder at about 3 p.m. or about two hours uh, before your collection. And then during that time period, restrict your fluids entirely. So no fluids uh, the hour or two before you collect. And then go ahead and collect around uh, 5 p.m. Again, right before the evening meal is, uh, is about right. Uh, so, again, for each one of these, then you're going to want to put your last name, first initial, and let's say this one, you know, might be at uh, 5.30 or thereabouts, and that's going to be 5.30 p.m., and that would be your dinner time sample. Next sample is going to be bedtime. So same thing, empty your bladder about two hours before you're planning on going to bed, uh, restrict your fluids over those two hours, and then collect right before bed. Um, you're going to want to avoid, again, large fluids uh, even, even before that, um, although you can, you know, 
have some water with dinner or, or what have you, um, and, but absolutely no caffeine during this time period. And then again, each sample needs to have your name, and this one might be, let's say, 11 p.m., and that would be considered your bedtime sample. The next one is going to be collected first thing in the morning. Uh, if you urinate during the night, we'll talk about that in a second. But when you're finished sleeping and you get up, immediately go and collect this sample. So don't lay around in bed. Uh, one of the hormones that we're testing or maybe testing is cortisol. And cortisol starts to go up right when you get up. And so we want to collect that sample immediately. Um, we don't want to wait around uh, for that to change a lot before we collect. So again, with this sample as before name and first initial, so this one might be, let's say, 6 a.m., and that is collected in the morning, but this is your overnight sample, so we're collecting the hormones from the overnight period there. And then the next sample is the morning sample. Now this one uh, you need to be real c careful about in terms of the timing of it. So, you know, you might set a timer when you get up and collect that third sample. If you set a timer for two hours, it's a lot easier to get this one as close as you can. Um, the other time periods are more approximate. We would like to keep this right at two hours, if at all possible. Uh, we want to restrict the fluids over that two hours. Not entirely, because uh, you just got up. You're going to want to have something with breakfast or what have you. But we want to limit that to one cup per 100 pounds of body weight. And then after that two-hour period and you collect, you'll be done. So you can go back to um, having your coffee or whatever it is that you normally have in the morning. But we do want to moderate that uh, during that two-hour period. Now, if you hit two hours and you can't go, go ahead and drink some fluids and then just go as soon as you're able. Then this one, again, of course, as always, we're going to put our first name and our initial. So this one might be, you know, maybe 8.10 a.m., and this is your morning sample. So raises a few questions. What happens if I have to urinate during the night? That's what the extra fifth strip is for. So if you wake up at, let's say, 1 a.m., uh, go ahead and collect the sample, and then go back to sleep and collect again that first morning sample as we just went through. If you wake up and urinate a second time during the night, uh, prior to that first morning sample, then don't collect any of those additional samples. Just that first one is adequate. So again, we're going to want to make sure we label these so we can keep them straight. So this one might be, let's say you collect it at 2 a.m. And this one is, again, an overnight sample. So you may have two of those. Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, we can easily separate those out based on the time labeling. Uh, if you don't collect this sample, so if you sleep through the night and you collect that morning sample, then go ahead and use that extra sample for the morning sample so we'll have two of those. Uh, so if you sleep through the night and wake up at 6 and you're up for the day and collect then, uh, go ahead and use that fifth sample to uh, submit two of the morning samples. So what if you're taking hormones? So hormones obviously can affect the levels that we're measuring depending on what the hormone is, how it's taken, when it's taken. Uh, there are written instructions uh, for those, you definitely want to listen to your healthcare provider if they have specific instructions for you. But other than that, uh, try to follow the instructions uh, that are given. Uh, if the hormones are taken in the morning, so if you normally wake up and take some sort of hormone, you're going to wait on that uh, when you collect that morning sample and then you have another sample two hours later. For that two-hour period, don't take any hormones. Wait till after that until you uh, take those hormones. And for anything that's not essential, um, you know, vitamins and things of that sort. It's best to just wait till after those two hours uh, to take those if you can. On day one, when you begin testing at dinner time, uh, go ahead and take your morning routine as you normally would. And again, for the hormones, follow the specific instructions that are given. Now, make sure you wash your hands before and after collection uh, and after you take hormones. We don't want to contaminate anything. And try not to ever touch the filter paper with your hands. All the samples really need to be dried, so let them dry overnight uh, and then mail them back just as soon as you can and put them back in those plastic bags after they're dried. You can send them by you know, any mail carrier you like. Uh, the USPS here in the States works just fine, um, but you can send it by another carrier uh, if you prefer. 
complete again all the information the requisition form the sample labels all of that needs to be filled out completely uh, if there's a payment card that's needed um, fill that out on the hormone information we need to know what you took so let's say you took estrogen or testosterone we need to know the specific uh, form that you took we need to know when you last took it um, so obviously if you take hormones after your last collection that's irrelevant to us but prior to that we want to know when the last time you took it was we do need to know the delivery method so if you take hormones orally uh, vaginally topical or transdermally sublingually we need to know that descriptive information because again it changes the expectation uh, in terms of some of the hormone results and if you have some questions on this you might check with your healthcare provider and if you have questions contact your healthcare provider or email us at info at precisionhormones.com or you can go to www.precisionhormones.com and there's additional information there uh, and we do thank you for testing with us if you uh, go to our website prior to uh, meeting with your doctor to go over the results uh, I would encourage you uh, to go to the interpreting results section under the video library of our website uh, that can be somewhat helpful if you go to the report overview section here uh, that can be helpful just in terms of understanding like how, what our reports look like and how to sort of interpret um, that just in terms of what the numbers mean and how they how they sit on the report they're a little bit different than a classic lab report and that can be somewhat helpful prior to looking over that with your healthcare provider and there's some other videos here that might be helpful um, the why testing hormones one is is good um, the, the sample collection video you're watching currently uh, and the introduction video uh, as well if you are a female patient and you have irregular cycles or if um, you've had an ablation so that really complicates things a little bit but we can still work with that but I would really encourage you to watch the irregular cycle collection video to make sure that you get it right uh, so again if you have questions email go to the website uh, and we look forward to testing your samples